in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the gfs model not the european model today because today's video is going to be a quick one so i wanted to use the model that we get the longest range on at least so we're going to just take a look here at the precipitation type the total precipitation and the total snowfall again a little bit of a quicker one today as this is a late night special so we're going to dive straight into things it's not going to be as edited either i just want to get the information straight out to you guys and really the theme here is more storms coming on shore to the west i mean we have storm number one here by monday we see up and down the west coast precipitation occurring mostly snowfall there for the sierra nevada so definitely an active system that does spread well into the rockies eventually we see that activity kind of continue before we get a low developing here over Ohio there on Thursday the 22nd, uh, and this is bringing pretty widespread rainfall for a lot of these areas throughout the Midwest and Ohio Valley into the interior northeastern states. Keep in mind warmer temperatures prevailing after this point, not really during it yet, but we are going to see that warm air continue to push and eventually win out, but for now... Uh, we do get some coastal activity not looking quite as amped as it did on yesterday's model runs where we saw a low pressure system forming much further south and riding all the way up the coast. Now we get this kind of transient uh, kind of low pressure system uh, area more like a cold front is how you could look at it that's extending down through into Florida and beyond into the Gulf with some interior snowfall. So we need to see this come together a lot more for this to end up being a snowstorm and not just a cold front with some snowfall on the back end. Regardless of all that, we do get extremely cold air here for the 23rd into the 24th here for the entire eastern states. Let's keep going, and as we move towards the 25th, 26th, again, we've noted this is a big pattern change time frame to watch. And look at by Tuesday on the 27th, we have severe cold out west with tons of snowfall and then this massive ridge in the central and eastern states this is exactly what we've been predicting for weeks now and sure enough it is really really looking to move in exactly the way uh, that we've been thinking uh which is you know for the long range uh relatively uh interesting usually there is some deviation and you know we do see the dates change a little bit or you know some of the severity of things but this one has really stayed true on the models for for the entirety of of the basically forecast range so that's been interesting and, and very good to see the accuracy of these models pulling through here uh, after you know we've had many events including our past two snowstorms where things were just off the first one you know was predicted too far north this one that we just had overnight uh, was way too far south so we've seen some very interesting just model failures in the short range which is really really alarming uh, we do see this low here, and this is the main one I want to draw your attention to. I think severe weather is a big possibility with this, mostly south of this line, I would say, uh, but maybe even closer to the low there. It's a possibility, but for Missouri, uh, the Ohio Valley here as well, uh, into kind of your deeper south areas, I think that severe weather is a possibility there, uh, but we're going to have to watch that. This is 10 days out, so definitely something to watch. Um we do get a little bit of a cold front, but it doesn't lead to too much cold air, and we actually get another system rising up through the plains. I think severe weather in spring is on the way here. I think the the uh, groundhog may have been correct um, as we look to move into a spring-like pattern, at least in the central and eastern states. That's the thing, right? I mean, the groundhog might be right in the central and eastern states, but completely wrong in the west, so it's really hard to say. Um you know whether the groundhog was right or wrong i think probably uh always wrong for the most part because it's hard to put uh, a title on it for the entire lower 48 usually there's cold in the west or the east and usually there's not warmth in both and this is a pure example of that you know people in the east are going to feel like oh spring is here you know it's the beginning of march and it's already feel feeling spring like and look the entire west is covered in snow and cold, so totally opposite depending on which side of the nation you are on. But again, this would be another situation where we're watching for severe weather uh, throughout the deeper south and throughout the kind of up and down that kind of Mississippi uh, river range there just to the west of it actually. Total precipitation reflects this. I mean, we have a lot coming on shore to the west even more than before, uh, especially the Sierra Nevada here where we get basically up to 10 inches or more of total precipitation through the next 10 to 15 days, which is going to be monumental amounts of snowfall. Uh, we translate this to 10 to 1 ratio on a conservative, very warm end, but these ratios are likely going to be even better than that. So we'll take a look at the total snowfall in a moment. But I do want to draw your attention to this rising area of moisture throughout the central states here, mostly 
as you can see areas pretty close to the gulf of mexico uh, as we see these storms kind of rising up and bringing in moisture i think severe weather and flooding is a big risk now here for these areas in the plains midwest ohio valley and even the deeper south here we're going to be watching very very closely for those types of impacts Total snowfall, again, just totally crazy amounts out west, and then almost nothing in the east. Again, there's still that chance that we see this coastal storm come together, but there's also the chance that we don't. So we need to watch it closely, but no guarantees in either direction. There's a very good chance it could look like this. There's a very good chance we could see more snowfall than this. So uh, we're at that range where it's kind of confusing like that. I do want to zoom this one into the west here uh, and just take a look at some of these totals and, and try to figure out what we're looking at here. Let's get a more zoomed out look here. Uh, and the maximum here on screen is 160 inches, and it is somewhere over the southern Sierra Mountains there, Sierra Nevada. Uh, and that is going to be just absolutely crazy amounts of snowfall. We're talking about potentially over 10 feet of snowfall. Uh, absolutely crazy to think about. Even if this estimate is a lot closer to 80 to 100 inches over the next 15 days, I mean, that is still going to be insane amounts of snowfall. So look for just incredible snow totals for the for the Sierra Nevada mountains there. But not only that, the Cascade Mountains also pulling in some really large numbers, well over three or four feet. So nothing too shabby there. And then it's really the Rockies where we're talking about more reasonable, you know, two to four feet in the mountain ranges, which I know that it sounds unreasonable, but compared to its Western counterparts out here, uh, that seems a lot less uh, snowy, but it really is just the whole mountainous west seeing tons and tons of snowfall. Anyway, guys, I know this video is quick. I do apologize. Be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.